Network topologies and the term topology. You might have heard that in college or some Earth studies, studying planet Earth, etc. This means some detailed like terrain map or such. In networking, a topology means the design of the network as well as the map of the network. Because when you look to it, you find it like a map, like you are looking for some objects and their locations and the roads or the paths between every object and the other. Map, like a map. Yeah, can be. Why not? At the same time, it's showing the object, the objects, each object based on its own connection type, sometimes colors, sometimes shape of the connections, and mostly the icons themselves the icon of a computer, the icon of a floppy disk, the icon of a multi-layer switch, a layer 2 switch, a router, a server, etc. You know the difference or the difference the different type of devices or nodes when you see their icon, their symbol. And that way a topology is created. Mainly we will talk about multiple types of topologies, but what we will talk about in this video and perhaps even in the upcoming one, maybe we'll need two videos to finish that. I am talking about from the perspective of designing a topology. What do I mean? In the previous video, or a couple of videos actually, I mentioned all the main, most used, and known network devices, components, routers, switches, multi-layer switches, firewalls, IPS, access point, controller, WLC servers, and um, uh, virtual machines. Okay, so components. Now, assume yourself you have all of these devices brought to you in fifth quantities actually from the procurement you are a network engineer and now you are sitting in a storage or in the warehouse looking at 50 different device okay use it use it for what use it to build the topology based on what based on the design based on the topology, based on the network design. So what I will talk about in these videos will be the network topologies from the perspective of design. Now you have devices, how should you connect each device to the other? Which devices should be connected directly, which should, be, which should not be connected directly? You, in the end, want to prove the concept of network by connecting multiple end devices. As simple as that. Because, of course, there are no ghosts living inside the routers want to communicate with other ghosts living inside another router in the end a human user would like to reach to do something to deliver or to receive an important info from either a server even info in a router or an info from another person using another computer remotely this is the idea so in the end we want to serve people users to make use of the network to be connected through the network so this is how to validate that so the idea is these users how should i really connect them to the network involve them in the network so that they will start using the correct device that should be connected to the correct next device that should be connected to the correct next device leading to the internet and on the other opposite side as well this is the design and this is where the topologies come to so we have mainly the first thing that we need to know the two most famous common important designs or topologies are called the two tier and the three tier designs so two tier and three tier are typical for enterprise and campus networks which came first uh this what is that actually again it's typical for enterprise networks and typical for campus networks which came for who, which, which one of that came first yeah this one is a different question i should have typed and enter here and what's the difference what i mean by that i mean which one came first two tier or three tier and what is the difference between two tier and three tier leave that for now but typical for enterprise and campus network this is the two tier design and the three tier design design let me start with the three tier because it delivers the most bright idea now you have the end points do you remember the previous video i told you what are the end points 
the definition of the endpoints and examples for endpoints computers personal desktops computers like desktops laptops ip phone printer ip camera and server mobile phone all of these are the endpoints so number one you have your endpoints and you have an endpoint that would like to communicate with another endpoint an endpoint would like to send or receive something from another point so that will be the idea so the first layer that your end devices should be connected to are mostly more than 90 percent are a layer two technology layer two said judd show some mercy we are ccna students i will have a chapter for layer two network technologies called network access but for now just to know the access the network access layer is your first gateway is the first thing that you will face you will connect to in most of the networks or actually in all of the three tier networks so that will be the access layer in the access layer you will find those classics which is that i've talked about a couple of videos before and a switch you are connected to should connect you and connect you to another switch that connects you to the destination but as you can see here unfortunately there is no real connection between that switch and that switch there is no real cable extended between any of these four switches that you can see by your, your eyes right now is that correct yes then well actually based on the three tier topology in order for a switch to reach, an, to reach another one it must pass through a device um it looks like a multi-layer switch correct i will tell you more info about that but it must pass through a layer three device like a multi-layer switch that should pass it to that other switch and that is called the distribution layer in the distribution layer you will find layer 3 devices like either routers or multi-layer switches you find here typically multi-layer switches can be mostly why because this device can have a port operating as a routing port and thus it will communicate with the router and can have another port operating as a switch port that can communicate directly with a switch so it's a hybrid device looks like two devices connected internally one half for routing another half for switching that's why we mostly will use multi-layer switches on that layer so at least what we will be having is that a switch an endpoint will have to ask its own switch to connect it via the distribution to another switch and the other switch will deliver to the destination this will be access distribution as long as we are still landing in the line landing this is just like a genius thing that i've just created lan in network like <laughs> ing okay i'm still shocked with that okay so lan ing i'm just still doing the lan engineering or the lan networking i can only need or use the access and distribution thank you lovely perfect we are good if i wanted something from the internet then my packet should go to my switch my switch will of course will not be able to connect me to any other thing no matter what it is it will go directly to the distribution layer the distribution layer will say your destination is the internet well the internet should be connected to the via to the core you will only go to the internet via the core based on the three tier not based on something Sajjad said, not like forever. This is, I'm not giving you a word like a sword at all. I'm telling you based on the three tier design that we are studying right now in this video, a packet going to the internet must pass through the most expensive, fast, speedest, like call, coolest, whatever devices, which are the routers that participates in the core the layer and the core layer will lead you to the cloud to the internet and the reply will go back all the way down so that you will receive your info when you would like to go to cisco.com youtube.com to see the channel google.com to google whatever you want etc so that is the classic typical lovely layer 3 design and access distribution core this should be the path from upstairs down also known as the downstream now something different will be the collapsed design collapsed like you want to collapse something um a can of pepsi or whatever you want so the collapsed design will be called a two-tier design in that case we are 
collapsing something so it will be smaller it will be simpler it has less components less complexity and that will be only two tier two layers layer number one will number one will be the axis layer number two will be the distribution and now you can see that i can either use this path to reach the destination this path to reach the, to reach the destination this path to reach the destination so many paths are available this is called the layer two this the tier the two tier this one is called the axis this one is not called the distribution it will only be called the aggregation because this layer is the collapsed result of combining both the distribution and the core and thus it's called the aggregation layer not a distribution please be careful design components and acronym are sensitive design distribution and core only and distribution and core for tier 3 aggregation for tier 2 only now something is lovely before i jump out for this slide is that the access layer will be responsible for authentication while the distribution layer will be responsible for fast convergence what is authentication these switches will decide you are based on your device based on something specific that i will tell you in chapter 5 2 3 and 5 based on your username password that you are entering in your network when you'd like to log in i either allow you or not this allowance or denial happens here after your allowance happens this layer is responsible for connecting you to the internet to the other components of the network etc so that will be the first step of tier 2 and tier 3 design now let me tell you about the spinal leaf before i end this video and the spinal leaf is specially used for data centers what is a data center simply data center is that typical best room in your network that all the network devices are most of the network devices are installed there so if you have a network that has a building of four floors okay this is a sub floor or whatever so floor number one two three and four and in each floor you have a department like uh, hr why are they on the fourth floor well i want them to go up the stairs and there is no elevator i like i like to do that okay and sales um it and accountant okay let's say it in that way well sales should be here at the beginning where they face the customer but okay let's consider them sales it accountant or, or finance uh, accountant and finance and hr in that way uh in order to connect these employees together and then one network you will need a switch uh, you will need a switch for these guys a switch for these guys a switch for these guys we are good um perhaps a router here just one single router and these switches will be connected to the router to route like between them and bring them the internet etc but under the ground i have one room that has multiple racks and just in case you have no idea really no idea about racks i will tell you so much of information about racks and rack security and protection in chapter five so bear with me until that time but i'll have so many racks inside them i will have all the distribution layer multi-layer switches all the core routers all the servers important all the firewalls all the ips the wireless controller and the cisco dna center and the virtual machines so all of these eight types of devices are located in one room very clean very low moisture very cold 15 to 20 uh, celsius degrees as at maximum from 10 to 20 actually the average should be 15 and perfect secured locked with so many security all of these security layers i've talked about in chapter 5 already so this is called the data center the design of connecting your devices together in the data center is called the class or the spinal leaf class or the spinal leaf it uses or consumes a special type of cisco switches that are called the nexus switches which have the top of the icon of these and that so when you have a really big big data center like not that really fourth floor um building if you are an isp or you are a mid to large network that has more than 500 to 1000 employee then you will need this design in your data center so if you have let me tell you something important if you are a company that you have tens of servers in your environment 
something for IPTV, something for VoIP, collaboration, video conferencing, uh, caching data, CDN, etc. Then you'll have really tens and tens of servers. The method of connecting the servers together together and the method remember that of connecting the virtual machines together should be done by using the class clos the spine and leaf where you have all of your servers are connected to the leaf switches which are layer two switches and of course layer two switches do not communicate between them each one to the other each leaf in order to reach the other leaf should pass a spine layer three switch a nexus layer three switch and go down to the other leaf nexus switch and it will reach the other server this is how things should be designed on these devices are extremely expensive not extremely very expensive extremely are for uh, service provider routers etc like 9000 and something from the asrs and they are very expensive they are very fast uh, these nexus switches run an operating system called nx os the nexus operating system that will be covered in this course for zero percentage because it's only only purely a data center thing so it will not be mentioned not here not in the ccmp of this level not in the cci of the enterprise no in the ccmp data center only and only yeah and there is also something called ios xr for service providers and i will talk a lot throughout the course okay so again so now you'll, the leaf will connect you via the spine to the other leaf and this action this simple movement of leaf spine leaf is called the three stage class design where for a server in order to reach to the other one it has to pass three hops one two three sometimes this is called a layer two gateway layer three gateway layer two gateway for the other guy sometimes it not depends on the design and this is a complete big complicated detailed word of the um data centers not mentioned here at all if you want to reach the internet then you can go upstream to reach the internet and go down why they are why they are very um expensive because they provide full redundancy no outage very fast convergence uh but requires a very good uh storage uh storage circumstances or storage um what do you call it the heat and the cold aisles hot aisles uh moisture content of the room of fire fighting system etc and one last thing before i end my video is called these two layers are called the fabric of the data center the switching fabric of the data center just in case you face that in the exam so i hope that everything was clear for you so far and i hope that this amount of info are enough for this video and we'll continue more designs in the upcoming one thank you